it's one of the most commonly asked questions in job interviews so today we are going to discuss designing database schema in context of relational database management systems i'm going to give you a problem statement in this problem statement we need to develop a survey application for a product company so the biggest mistake you can do in an interview when somebody gives you a problem statement like this and ask you for you know design the database schema is that if you start writing tables or you know writing uh, columns or relationship between tables straight away as soon as you get this one line of problem statement remember that uh, popular saying the sooner you start coding the later you finish it it is so much applicable when it comes to database designing also your tables relationship between your tables you know the constraints such as primary key uniqueness everything is governed by the functional requirements of the application that you are designing so you cannot basically start designing tables or you know databases without understanding the requirements in detail so the first thing we need to do when we get this generic problem statement is we need to ask questions why do we need to do this data modeling you know making database is like getting tattooed it's very very tough to correct your mistakes and you know redo the things so it's very important that you get it right while doing it first time so don't just jump into you know creating tables and columns and keys think about it think about the problem that you are solving think about the application that you are building we are trying to create a survey application for a product manufacturing company now as i said don't jump into database modeling yet this vague problem statement is clearly not enough to start designing your relational database management system don't run rush into you know okay i will have table number 1 table number 2 index number 1 index number 2 no don't do that ask questions number 1 is defining the purpose of the database right this is important to have the larger picture in mind before we get into the nitty gritty or fine details of you know tables and columns and primary keys and foreign keys and everything we must have the larger picture we must know why are we why are we creating this database right what is the reason of existence of this project for example in our survey application the company wants to conduct this survey to have business intelligence or maybe just to keep historical records but you must know what is the purpose of this application step number 2 as i said you must list down all the major functional requirements so for demonstration purpose here i have listed down four of them right so requirements are for this application a survey should be or can be reused for multiple products a user can only take a survey when he or she purchases a particular product the survey can have three types of questions one is subjective question for example what do you think of our payments service there could be single choice objective question where you, have, you know four radio buttons and user has to click one of them or there could be check boxes so multiple options and multiple possible responses so we have three types of question subjective then objective and objective we have two types radio button questions and check box questions then uh, the surveys shall collect product feedback feedback about the company as well as some useful user demographics information once i have the functional requirements with me now just based on your functional requirements just list down the entities don't worry about which of these entities will become your tables right just list down the entities for example from the requirement it seems there will be a company entity product you know definitely user because user is going to give the survey survey of course survey will have question every question will have possible answers then when user undertakes a survey he will provide or she will provide response and i think we will need some report so i have listed down all these entities once you have listed down the entities you need to identify which of these entities will be your tables for example report here in my case i don't think report has to be a table what report could be basically is i will put up some sql join queries and i'll get some data useful report data from other tables and probably create a pdf document as a report right i don't need to create a report table because report requirements might change and i do not want to lock down my 
report requirements into a you know schema of a table rest of them i can see that they could be my tables all right so once we do that let's move on to next step that is deciding the relationships between your tables you know the advantage of listing down all the functional requirements now this will help us immensely in establishing these relationships for example a company has many products a survey is used by one or more products so survey is reusable a survey is taken by zero or more users a user responds to survey for one product purchase so user will respond to a survey in context of a product right a survey has many questions that goes without saying a question has zero or more answers now in in the answers here are basically choices right so if a question is a subjective question there are no answers there are no choices so it will have zero answers in that case if a question is a multiple choice question like our radio box question or check box question that will have few answers right so can you see here i have created relationships between my tables using my functional requirements right and this is very important because this will dictate the creation of primary keys and foreign keys all right so that is our step number 5 now we need to decide the columns keys and constraints some fields could be unique for example email id of a user has to be unique so that we have you know unique users responding to surveys we badly want to generate reports about user demographics so you cannot make the country column of user as you know nullable column it has to be not null user must provide their country right so all these things will again come back to your functional requirements as i'm saying so this is the step where you decide your columns and constraints now that we know all the steps that need to be followed in database design process or data modeling process let's move on to the final schema that we are going to create so my first table will be product i will have columns such as id product name category company id because every product will belong to a company again we start this application with just one company but tomorrow we may want to extend this application to other companies as well so it's important that we have one more table called as company and we'll have columns such as again id which is a primary key and then name right that's about it now one company has many products because product table has a column called as company id which will be the foreign key right user user will have attributes or columns such as id uh, name then email age country now you remember what was the larger picture the purpose of our database to get some you know reports based on user demographics so that dictates the column that we choose in our user table so probably i would like to add one more such as gender right if the business owners want to know the statistics such as how many female users are purchasing one particular product then probably this column is required so the choice of columns the selection of columns is also dictated by the functional requirements as well as sometimes the larger picture that is the purpose of the database in our case it was business intelligence next table that we will need is survey of course id title will give a title to a survey and that's about it so remember that here everywhere id is the primary key in all these tables now a survey will have questions so the next table is question id as the primary key type so question can be of type let's say we'll give them some values 0 1 or 2 0 for subjective question 1 for radio radio button question and 2 for check box kind of question right where you know you can choose multiple answers from the choices text every question will have a text you know like what do you think about our payment process or what do you think about our uh, delivery process something like that every survey will have questions so question table will have a foreign key survey underscore id right that will be established relationship between survey and question now in case of objective questions we will need to have another entity or table called as answer answer will have columns such as id primary key then text 
again so answer text so the choices basically for objective question let's say a question has four choices you know i was satisfied uh, i was not very satisfied the process was bad process process was good something like that so that will be the choice text the option text and then because this is in context of a question we'll have foreign key question id remember subjective question with type 0 will not have a entry in the answer table you know they will not have any choices they will just have text subjective question now we have to take care of how will user respond to a survey so i'm going to create a table or entity called as responder this is basically a table for mapping relationship between survey user and product user id foreign key product id foreign key and i'll say survey id as my foreign key so this is basically a user is responding to a survey for a product so we are mapping the relationship a user when she or he purchases a product will give a survey about that product that relationship is mapped in this responder model or table finally we need to store the responses of the user so we'll have a response table and it will have columns such as id as the primary key then question id because every response will be for a question answer id if it's a multiple choice question the response will be for one particular choice right then we have for subjective question we don't need answer id but we need response text for example as i said what do you think about our payment process so in that case that response will be stored in the form of this response text field and then finally to map this response with the responder we'll have responder underscore id which will be a foreign key on the responder table so we'll know that this response is by this user for this survey in the context of this product this is pretty much it this is my schema for our survey application for a product company problem statement let's quickly run through some of the questions that you might have for example how to determine which survey to use for which product right that we can store in a separate table product survey it's kind of pivot table so we'll have just id product id and survey id so this will tell our application that let's say for product uh, id 1 let's say we need to have survey id 2 right so that entry will be stored here so imagine some data like this so product number 1 survey number 1 product number 2 survey number 3 something like that so that mapping of which survey to be presented to a user for for one particular product will be stored here right again you must be wondering but that information is already captured here again that user is responding to this survey for this product purchase but this was to make a decision in application right because tomorrow for one particular product let's say product number 1 we may want to change the survey that is being used today we are using survey number 1 for product number 1 but let's say we have change in requirement so we want to give survey number 5 for product number 1 right so we can make that change here in this table and accordingly in our application when user is asked to give survey for that particular product we'll choose that survey from you know this table that will present him with that survey now another question could be when the product changes the survey that it is using product id number 2 is using survey id number 3 what if i want to change for product 2 i want to use new survey of id let's say 15 now so what happens to the old entries where users have already responded to survey number 3 for the purchase of product number 2 they have already responded yeah we have noted them here so even if you change this mapping that you say instead of 3 now product 2 will use 15 number survey right we still have those old entries here because in earlier times any user for product id 2 was using survey id 3 right so all those old responses will be still be intact even if you change this mapping to survey id 15 so this is a flexible design in that regard next question would be in the response table why do we have question id when we already have the answer id answer table already has the question id so why are we having question id and answer id both in the response table if we have the answer id we'll automatically get the question id right but again that will be short-sighted because remember for subjective questions that is of type 0 we did not have entry in the answer table because subjective questions do not have choices these are basically this table is for choices 
right for objective questions for our subjective questions there will be no entry here so in that case if you do not maintain the question id in the response table for that response of a subjective question you won't know for which question it is correct so it's important to have both question id for subjective questions and answer id for objective questions in your response table for example the question id is 6 how satisfied you were with our purchase process and the options are option number 11 is very much 12 okay you know 13 bad and 14 very bad right and let's say user selects this option okay right in that case answer id will be 12 you know there will be no response text because this is a objective question and responder id will be here the for which user you know this primary key of this table so which user is giving this answer for which product and which survey so that foreign key will be here right so this takes care of our objective question right similar pattern can be followed for our uh, objective question with multiple possible responses the only difference will be for that one particular question we'll have multiple entries in response table now before we conclude we must think about few things reusability is this design reusable one survey can be used for multiple products just by maintaining this mapping so surveys are reusable right uh, as i said this whole application right now we are using for one company but because we have this company id foreign key in product table tomorrow we can use this same application for multiple companies so that entire application is reusable one more possibility of reusability here is questions can we reuse the questions across different surveys right now we don't have the provision but we can totally extend that by adding a small pivot table called as survey question so it will have two foreign keys basically uh, survey id and question id so we can say you know survey number 1 will have question number 1 survey number 2 will have question number 1 survey number 3 will have question number 1 so we are reusing the questions right so we can determine which survey will have which question and then simply we can reuse the questions in you know multiple surveys so you can totally do that by extending this design so again this design is extensible if you want to make that change we can also go back to listing of our functional requirements and we can just do quick walk through of all these requirements are met through our design or not so once you do that the last step is to quantify this design we need to create a artifact of this design using some notation called as er diagram so in the next video i'm going to take this database schema uh, that we have designed and i'm, I'm going to teach you how to draw a correct entity relationship diagram if you like my videos or my work please subscribe to the channel and also turn on the notification so that you are always updated with new videos happy coding